Anywho, many Christians have prayed for years that Roe v. Wade would be overturned, and um, myself included. Um, but if you're like me, you probably didn't expect to see this happen in your lifetime. But in God's providence, it has finally happened. This decision is being met with celebration by some. It's being met by, by out, with outrage by others. And, and, and some are responding with, with a kind of lukewarmness, a kind of cautious enthusiasm, because they see this as, as perhaps a positive development, but they're also concerned for, for women who can't afford quality health care or who can't afford to raise their babies and, and what this decision might mean for them in the future. And then still others are observing that this decision won't really put an end to the killing of unborn babies in this nation. Maybe you've seen some of those responses. Um, as God's people, I, I want to encourage you, New Hope, to, to think about all this in a way that's rooted in what we know about God and about his gospel. By declaring that no one has a, a constitutional right to elective abortion, what, whether they, they know it or not, the, the Supreme Court is in fact aligning itself in part with the ethics of God's kingdom. It's my opinion that this decision is a partial answer to the prayer that many of us have been praying even recently, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because God's kingdom is a kingdom where life is preserved and it is valued from, from womb to tomb. And as far as I can see, this decision is going to save lives, the, the lives of the littlest and the least of these. And that's something to praise God for. It's something to thank him for. There's also an opportunity here for God's people, New Hope. It's an opportunity to show that as followers of Christ, we don't just care about the sanctity of life in theory, but we truly want to love our neighbors as ourselves. This is an opportunity, perhaps, for the people of God to be people who care about the quality of life of those children who will be saved by this decision. To show that we're a people who care about the underlying factors that that can make abortion look like a reasonable alternative to, to many women. It's an opportunity for us to be people who use their own gifts and their own time and their own money to provide for the littlest and least of these. Did you know, New Hope, that practicing Christians in the U.S. adopt at a rate that's, adopt, they adopt children at a rate that's more than twice as high as non-Christians? It's, it's true, but well, what if that number were to grow, multiply. Uh, as a church, we get to partner with our friends at Expect Hope. With Expect Hope is a Christ-centered residence that provides a home and counseling and training and mentoring for expectant moms and new moms in the Bronx who, who statistically would be prime candidates to, to seek abortion. What if what if Expect Hope and, and ministries like expect hope were, were to receive so much support that they could expand and multiply to serve more and more moms and children in Jesus's name. I want to invite you, um, I want to invite us together to pray about the ways that we might be able to, to help that happen. Uh, I want to encourage us as a church to, to seek to discern how the Lord is calling us to move. And, and, and let's also praise God, New Hope. Let's praise God. This Supreme Court decision doesn't wipe away the problem of abortion. It, it, it doesn't wipe away the underlying causes, but it is still uh, what I would call just reform. You know, in 2 Kings chapter 23, we're told that King Josiah, uh, because he feared God, he destroyed the idols and the vessels that the Israelites were using to worship false gods. And the scripture reports that to us as something to, to praise the Lord for, something to celebrate and to honor King Josiah for, even while it shows us that those actions didn't erase the practice of idolatry in Israel. It didn't erase the people's propensity to love false gods. Frankly, the, the, the reform wasn't enough. 
But 2 Kings 23 shows us that, that we can celebrate just legislation and reform even when it's imperfect. Even when, while we acknowledge that it doesn't erase every underlying problem, we can still thank God for what such reform does accomplish. And, and we can plead with God to do what legislation and Supreme Court decisions can't do. But he can do. And he can do through his church. Let's pray for him to do that. To address every underlying cause. To meet the needs of every mother. To meet the needs of every child. Let's keep praying for his kingdom to come. And for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Even as we commit ourselves to be a part of the answer to that prayer. God bless New Hope.